Okay, so we're carrying on with question two from exercise 10F in the first year textbook. Um, and this, this part of the question is worth seven marks on its own. Um, so we're doing this as a, as a separate video, as it's quite long. Um, and that's, that's as much as the rest of the question all added together. So let's just remind ourselves what this question was about. So we had two particles hanging over a pulley. We had particle P and particle Q. We weren't given the mass of P, but we, we've worked out in the previously in the question that, that um, the value of K. And Q is, so Q is falling because Q has the greater mass and it reaches the plane, or basically the, the floor, and then obviously it stops moving. So let's have a think about what's going to happen there. So obviously as Q is falling and then hits the ground, P is going to be moving upwards. It does say in the question that the distance between P and the pulley is enough that, that P doesn't hit the pulley. And then once Q has hit the ground, um, so the string will no longer be taut. So P is going to carry on moving upwards for a little bit. But then if it's no longer being pulled up by the string, gravity is going to be the only force working on it. Um, so it's, it's going to slow down and eventually come to a stop. And that's what this question is about. So we want to figure out the greatest height reached by P. OK, and seven marks. So there's going to be quite a bit of work to do. OK, so well, let, let's just have a think about P. So and let's think about what's going to happen after Q hits the plane or Q hits the, the ground. So once Q has hit the ground, um, I'm going to take um, up as positive because that's the direction P will be moving in. But, but you can take down as positive as long as you're consistent. So after Q has hit the plane, the acceleration of P will become minus 9.8. Um, however, if I look back to the question, they want a final answer that's in terms of G. So that tells me it's actually not a good idea to use 9.8. I should really leave that as minus g, okay? And that's if I'm taking up as positive. If you're taking down as positive, then a is going to be g. Right, and then I want to know sort of how high it gets. So that's gonna to be to do with its displacement. P, as we said, is just gonna carry on moving up, slowing down due to gravity, um, and then it's gonna reach its greatest height when its velocity is zero. And that's all I have. So that's not going to be enough information to be able to use any of the SUVA equations. So the missing, the missing piece of the jigsaw is going to be the initial velocity of Q. Because if I, sorry, this is P I'm talking about. So after Q hits the ground, this is what's happening to P. So, um, but up until the point where Q hits the ground, they're, they're, they're obviously traveling with the same acceleration. We've used that previously in the question. And they're going to be traveling with the same velocity. So if I can find out the velocity with which Q hits the ground, that will be the initial velocity of P for this part of the journey. So let's go back to when they were still attached. So we know from the question, so I'm going to look at Q and I'm going to take down as positive. So we were told in the question that whilst they were still attached, um, Q was moving down with an acceleration of a third G. They were released from rest originally. So U was zero. I'm told in this new part of the question that um, it takes 1.8 seconds. So I know that T is 1.8. And I'm trying to find V because the final velocity of this part of the journey becomes the initial velocity for the bit that I'm trying to look at. So I can use V equals U plus AT. So V is zero um, plus uh, third G times T. And again, I want, I want my final answer to be in terms of G. So I want to leave that. So third times 1.8 is 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 G. And that is going to become the initial velocity this part of the journey. So looking at the information I've got here, I'm going to use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So v squared, so 0 squared is 0 0.6 g squared 
plus 2 times a, and a is minus g, so that would become minus 2g, and then this is what I'm trying to find. So if I square those brackets out, that's going to become 0.36g squared minus 2gs. So if I add the 2gs over, then I'm trying to find s, so if I divide through... So that g squared is looking a little bit awkward, but actually that's absolutely fine because that's now going to cancel and that's going to become 0 0.18. So that's the 0 0.36 over 2 and then g squared over g will just cancel to, to g. Okay, so that is clearly not the answer they've given me there, but that's because they didn't ask me how far um, p travels upwards after q hits the ground, which is what that distance is. I do need that distance, but they want, so, so that's, that's what that, that value is. So that's how far P travels upwards after Q has hit the ground. But they want the um, greatest height of P. Okay, so it's quite nice that they've made it a show that question because I can clearly see I haven't got, haven't got the answer, the final answer just yet. So, well, so how, what's the greatest height of P going to be? Well, however far Right, so however far Q travels downwards, P will travel that distance upwards. So let's find that distance there. Okay, so, so I want to go back to, to these calculations here. So basically, I want to find how far Q travels in that time. So um, I'm going to use... Um, S equals a half u plus v times t. Am I though? There's other super equations I, I could have used instead. So that's going to be um, a half times naught plus 0.6g times t, which is 1.8. So that's going to be a half times 0.6 times 1.8 g so that's 27 over 50 g or 0 0.54 g okay um so that there those together are still not going to add up to to 1.26 which is what i'm after but this so my diagrams are absolutely essential it wants the total height. So the total height of P is going to be how far P has traveled up, so that distance there, plus that height there, because this must have been the initial height they were released from. Yeah, so however far Q gets in this 1.8 seconds, that's the initial height. So hopefully we say, I'm sorry, it's not the initial height, is it? It's the greatest height of P. So it started at a height of 0.4 G from that answer. It then went up a height of 0.4 G. Yeah, and that was up until um, Q hit the ground. Then after Q hit the ground, it went up a height of 0.18 G. And we're going to hope that if we do 0.54 times 2 plus 0.18, we get, lovely, we do get 1.26g. And then it was a show that question. So we're just going to add as required to show that we have got our final answer.